In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create this tab bar. We're going to make this orange box behind the selected tab. And we're going to be having different pages on the bottom of it as well. So when we swipe, we would like to have this transition between the tabs. And of course, when we swipe back, we have it as well. I have used a Componist for our view pager and the indicator, so you can add it as well. And other than that, we don't have anything else. We just have this tab bar component. And let's see how it's done. Usually by default, you're going to be having or using something like this, the default indicator type, which is just tab row defaults, and then we're setting the pager state, so on which page we are on. And let's see how it looks like by default. If we run it, as you can see, we have this underline over here that's just being, that's just moving between the tabs when we swipe. Let's go back to the previous one and see how it's done. Again, we're doing almost the same thing. We're just extending this uh, composable. We're creating this composable. And when we go in our custom indicator, Let's see what we have there. For the animation, we're creating two transitions. We're calculating the start of our animation. So this will be the start of the, for example, left tab when we're swiping right. And the end will be the end of the end tab when we're swiping right again. So we know how to make the transition and we're just setting some spring animation. So again, you can maybe skip that if you don't want the animation, or you can do it like this as well. Below them, we can see that we have our offset. This will be always our indicator start and our width, which is being calculated based on the indicator end minus the indicator start. And this is making this resizing of our width if we just put it as a static number, just to show you, we will have again our indicator moving, but it will not be resizing in width. Then we're setting the orange background and we're setting some border as well. Now what's important here is that because we can see here that the text is always in front of this orange box and it should be of course, Again, it really depends on the design, but it usually should be. We have this Z index. So because we're making our box, we would like the box to always be behind the text. And if we're setting the Z index here to one, that means when we go to our tab, we would like to have the Z index to a bigger number than the box one. So that's why it's set as two. But let's say we're removing this or we're going to set this as zero. And as we can see, it, when it updates, it's actually going to be behind. So this means our box is now in front of the text just because our Z index is less than the box one. And of course, if it's bigger, it will be the opposite. And the last part, but not the necessary one, we have this horizontal pager. And this is just because we would like to have this content over here. And we're not doing anything special here. We're just creating a horizontal pager component. We're passing the pager state, the pager size, and then inside the content, we're passing the page. So every time we uh, swipe, we're changing this page ID over here. And usually you do it differently. You just, we're doing, for example, when page, and on every page, you know, you're going to be just having a different content. That's how usually you should do it. But of course, it really depends what application you're making. Well, that was it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more.